So, welcome to part two. Now, in the last video, I was able to get these three piles of MacBooks working. They all have RAM, they all have hard drives, and they all boot up. But that's not quite good enough for me, because, see, if I were a scoundrel, I would take all of these, go on eBay, sell them each for, on average, $100, maybe $150, and I'd probably make about $1,500, which would be more than double what I paid for them, and I could pocket that money and go home a happy boy. But I'm not a scoundrel, all right? And any allegations as such will be rejected with scorn, because my goal is to make as many of these MacBooks as humanly possible perfectly working. And that means batteries, and more importantly, solid state drives. So for today's video, we are gonna go all out on these MacBooks with the help of this project's sponsor, iFixit. With their help, I have purchased four additional 13-inch 2010 logic boards for these four shells right over here, so we can fix those up and get an additional four MacBooks, and one additional 15-inch logic board that I'm gonna use to create an additional 15-inch MacBook Pro out of the spare parts that are sitting around. I also bought this box, which is literally chock full of batteries for all of these different MacBooks. And then finally, I went to Micro Center and I bought this. A bag full of SSDs. So every single one of these computers is going to run at its absolute best. So yeah, this ought to be a doozy of a video. Today's video is sponsored by Total AV, the all-in-one cybersecurity solution that believes that cybersecurity should be hassle-free. Total AV offers virus, malware, and ransomware removal, AI-driven web protection, a super-fast VPN, mobile phone compatibility, and data breach checks that scan to find out if your information has been compromised. That last one is a critical point. Just a year ago, my debit card information was stolen after a data breach on the company that handled my graduation regalia. So almost immediately after my graduation last summer, I was greeted with hundreds of dollars in charges on my debit card, and it was a major hassle to get that resolved. These are the types of breaches that Total AV is scanning for, whether it's debit card or credit card information, as in my case, or something as simple as a password that shows up in a data breach. Total AV comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and has a five-star rating on Trustpilot. Plus, right now you can save 80% on an annual subscription, so head over to the link in the description below to check out Total AV today. And now, back to the video. So at this point, you might be wondering, where on earth am I gonna start? Because clearly there's a lot that has to happen from putting batteries to installing all the SSDs to putting operating systems on all the SSDs and even cleaning all of these MacBooks which are covered in stickers and years of dirt but I think the best place to start is by getting five additional MacBooks working. So we already have quite a big pile, but these four 13 inch and this assorted pile here of 15 inch were enough to get working computers. I just didn't have logic boards that worked with them. So I went on eBay and bought a couple more. I paid 70 bucks a piece for the four 13 inch and then I paid $100 for the 15 inch. They're all mid 2010. So basically what we're gonna do is just swap out these new working ones for the broken logic boards in each of these. I think they all have RAM as it is, so everything should be able to work. And then after that, we'll be able to get five more MacBooks to add to the pile. We'll start with the 15 inch. So this logic board is going to be paired, and keep with me on this, display from here, top case from here, bottom case from here, logic board from eBay. And that should give us a working 15 inch MacBook Pro. So let's put all of these pieces together.
All right, so with the additional 15 inch MacBook Pro built, we can turn our attention to these. These four 13 inch 2009 MacBook Pros don't really work. These three just don't power on. This one tries to, but the RAM slots are bad. And so there's really not much that can be done there. So what we're gonna do is actually upgrade all of these from 2009 to 2010s. I bought four additional logic boards and we're gonna swap them out. I'm also hoping in the process that one or two of these three batteries will actually hold a charge and thus be usable because I'm not sure if I bought enough batteries for the number of MacBooks that we're gonna have. But without any further ado, let's upgrade these MacBooks. So in the process of testing this particular MacBook Pro, um, well, we had a slight issue. The, basically, what I discovered was that one of the fans on the logic board had been broken. The connection on the actual logic board itself snapped off. So this was only running on one fan. And the reason I figured out to check on that was because there was a small fire. Um, this is the RAM that was in it, and the lower RAM stick is melted because of how hot it got in there, and it smelled like smoke. All right, we are in the home stretch of getting all of these MacBooks up and running. I went back through, did some further testing, and isolated a couple of issues. We had one MacBook that didn't actually have an airport card, so I had to swap the airport card out of one of the parts. We had a couple of bad trackpads, stuff like that. Uh, this is the last of the troublesome MacBooks that has a bad trackpad. This is something that happens pretty frequently on older unibody MacBook Pros. The trackpads just won't click. There's one issue though. This is not a MacBook Pro. This is one of the aluminum MacBooks. And by the way, I will be making a video on the aluminum MacBook because I think it's pretty interesting. So make sure to leave a comment down below, get subscribed if you wanna see that. But the main issue that I have here is that this trackpad isn't the same part as you would find in later MacBook Pros. So this is the trackpad that Apple used from 2009 to 2012 in the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's great because it's cross compatible with all of those different models. However, it doesn't work on this unibody MacBook because there's a different mounting mechanism. This one has three screws. This one uses like a little tongue and then four screws. So I can't use this and I was like, dang it, I don't have any other track pads. But then I had a thought. I checked on the iFixit repair guides and looked around at other MacBooks that have this blue track pad and it turns out I actually have one. And here it is. It's the 2009 17 inch MacBook Pro. I, it's weird that you wouldn't think that these things would have the same trackpad, but they do. Look at that, blue PCB, three screws holding it in, just like over here. Obviously there's a different ribbon cable, but it doesn't matter because that's detachable, so we can use it. That's why I love working with these bulk orders because you know when doing a repair on a single MacBook, I could come across a bad trackpad and say, oh man, now I have to go order this for $10 on eBay, it's gonna take a week to get here. But with this type of project, chances are, 99% of the time, I have a part in some MacBook somewhere in here that I can use to get this thing working. So let's go ahead and swap these trackpads. Well, how about that? That right there is a table covered in MacBooks. So, 
Here's what we got so far. These are the 12, yes, 12 working unibody 13 inch MacBooks here. And right now what I need to do is the simple yet wide scaled task of getting all of these with batteries and SSDs. So let's see what we're working with to start. Okay, so that's all the bottom cases off. Yeah, I'm, I'm short one, I noticed that. But the other thing you'll notice quite quickly is I only have three working batteries. I bought a bunch of batteries and a bunch of SSDs, so let's get to work. Next up, with all the 13-inch MacBooks taken care of, it was time to move on to the 15-inch MacBook Pros. At this point, I started working on getting operating systems installed on all of these MacBooks, but I kept encountering weird issue after weird issue. Stuff like batteries that just mysteriously weren't charging the computer, or weird things like this. This is by far the weirdest issue I've ever seen. So this computer supposedly is booted, but as you can see, nothing on the screen. That happens sometimes. There's like a bad backlight or even uh, a bad GPU. But check this out. One way that you can check if the display is on is by shining a flashlight through the Apple logo and through the display. But I bet you've never seen this before. What on earth is it doing? It's like changing color it's red it's green it's blue so like all of the sub pixels are lighting up individually and then together and then dimmer and then it's like weird panels and then it starts over again what in the world is wrong i've never seen this before oh well i uh unplugged the display connector and brushed it out with a little paintbrush and now it's working. What the, these old computers are so weird. After installing some batteries that came in for the 13 inch aluminum MacBooks, I dealt with yet more infuriating issues such as airport cards not working, batteries not charging, and trackpads not responding. But by far the most infuriating thing that I found so far is with this MacBook. I actually learned two things while I was installing macOS Catalina. The first thing is that this is a 2011 MacBook Pro with the Core i7, so it's the most powerful one here. That's great. The other thing that I learned is that the entire middle row on the keyboard after S, so from D all the way over, just doesn't work. Fortunately, I have another top case because I've got a load of parts sitting around, so let's go ahead and transfer it over.
So now we've got it fixed and the keyboard is working, but there's another issue. And this is something that can happen fairly often on old unibody MacBook Pros like this. And that is that the battery just is not showing up. This is a battery that I know works because I've tested it and it's not showing up. So your first thought is, oh, dang it. That probably means the logic board has a problem. I know the battery works. I know everything else is good, but in system information, no battery showing up. If I pull the power cord here, the whole thing dies. Let's go ahead, open the machine up, and all I'm gonna do is unplug the battery status indicator light. Then we can go ahead and power the machine on. And just like that, now the battery is charging, and if we go to system information, we can see info on the battery. The issue was not the battery or the logic board. It was in fact that indicator light. So all we have to do is replace it. I happen to have a spare one right here, of course. Or let's be honest, if you don't wanna buy one of these, you can just leave it unplugged or even just cut the connector off altogether and not even have to worry about it. So that's one issue solved and this MacBook is now fully operational. Welcome to cleaning day. This is a big one and it's gonna be, to be quite honest, quite a pain. So this is most of the MacBooks though. I am still working on a few things, but the big goal for this segment is to clean all of these up. So I've got my screen cleaner, I've got my microfiber cloth, I'll link some good ones down below, and then I'm also going to be using these, the picks from the iFixit Protect Toolkit. These I find really handy for prying and scraping away at the sticker, actually this one's, that one just came off. That's why these things are so useful. They can peel and pry, but they're plastic and they won't scratch the lid. So without any further ado, let's get into this. Well, after nearly two hours of scraping away at sticker residue, it's finally time to reveal the stash. And well, here it is. This is my pile of fully working, newly restored MacBooks. And my goodness, what a pile it is. In fact, you probably can't even see that you know, there's two more behind me and one in my lap because I ran out of room on my table and I wanted some symmetry. Every single one of these has a solid state drive. They have RAM, they have Mac OS Catalina, they have airport cards, they have trackpads that work and click, they have batteries that hold charges, they have Bluetooth that connects, they have ports that work, they have power buttons that turn them on. Oh God, the one all the way up front ran out of battery. That's unfortunate. Anyway, ignoring that, it's a lot more complicated than you would think to have to keep track of all of those things because, you know, I'm going through fixing these things up. I'm mainly worried about, you know, booting up visible things like a cracked screen or missing keys. But then there's the more insidious ones like you fire something up and you realize that it won't connect to Wi Fi. Or uh, we had the one MacBook where the middle row of keys didn't work. And it's like, I wouldn't have found that out until I was all the way through an OS install and then had to completely rebuild that MacBook. This is probably why I was able to buy a pile of 32 for so cheap, just 700 bucks, because it's not just about working parts, it's about the amount of energy that you have to put into those working parts to get working MacBooks. So many of the ones that I had that even the ones that just turned on right out of the box, they still needed a lot of maintenance to, to get them to this stage where they would be, you know, resellable. And even then, if I'm honest, there are still some issues. Some of these don't have working battery indicator lights. Uh, most of the batteries that I got for very, very cheap don't hold 
very good charge. I can see that one all over there is plummeting pretty rapidly. Uh, so there are still things that make these not exactly perfect restorations, but the goal was to get as many MacBooks out of that pile as possible working. And I think I've come pretty close. Now, in order to do that, I did incur some pretty significant expenses. In the last video, everything that I did was with the original batch of parts. So the last video was free. Essentially, I was just combining parts from what I had. But for this video, to increase the number of MacBooks from like 14 to 19, I did have to go out and buy a lot of stuff. So let's run through the list of everything that I had to purchase to get all of these MacBooks restored. So to start things off, I paid $720 for the original boxes of 32 MacBooks, but then I ended up needing some logic boards. So I bought four 2010 13 inch logic boards for $278. I bought one 2010 15 inch logic board for $110. And then I actually ended up needing to buy another 2009 15 inch logic board to replace the one that caught fire. And that was $58. I also bought two bottom case covers for the 13 inch aluminum MacBooks. That was $17. And then to buy all the batteries for all of these machines, that was 167. Mind you, they were very cheap batteries. But by far the biggest expense were the 16 SSDs that I had to purchase for $448 total. So the total cost for all 19 working MacBooks is $1,798, which works out to $94 per MacBook. So did I get a good deal? Did I pay a good per MacBook price? Well, it's hard to say when you divide it evenly because you know, at $94 for these 13 inch aluminum MacBooks, these are the, the cheapest ones here, that would probably not be the best deal. But when you consider that we have seven 15 inch unibody MacBook Pros, I think $94 for a working 2010 in decent shape with an SSD and RAM, I think that's pretty good. Right, so let's talk about specs. What did I actually buy? Well, here's the full breakdown. We have four aluminum unibody 13 inch MacBooks from 2008. There's one 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2009, six 13 inch MacBook Pros from 2010, as well as one MacBook Pro 13 inch from early 2011, and that one has a dual core i7, mm, fancy. Then there's one 15 inch MacBook Pro from 2009, and then there are six 15 inch 2010 MacBook Pros. Now at this point, you might be wondering, Luke, what the heck are you gonna do with 19 working restored MacBooks? Well, don't worry, you don't need to send me an email asking if I will mail one to you halfway across the world because I have already set up to donate as many of these as I can. There's a school that my family and I have been working with for many years in Philadelphia, my hometown, and I am going to try to donate all of these to them. And that's the really impressive thing. I mean, these MacBooks are 11 to 14 years old, and yet with a couple of upgrades, they are definitely usable. Google Drive, web browsing, YouTube video watching, these guys can do that. And that's really impressive. I mean, if you go back to when these were new 12 years ago, you couldn't realistically use 1998 computers in, in 2010, that was a tall order. But this is the way that computing has shaped up. So let me know what you guys think of this project. Did you enjoy watching 19 MacBooks get fixed up? Let me know in the comments below. I am exhausted, I've run out of things to say, the MacBooks are starting to fall asleep and run out of battery, so let's wrap it up. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.